Uh, the upside of the end is that we've discussed a lot of things already. So maybe one thing is work by my student uh, Julian. However, he's probably in one of the few places that are nicer now. He's on Hawaii, uh, which is reasonably close from here, but still a five hours flight. So he decided against uh, coming. I can't blame him fully. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's work with my colleague Georgia from Amasis and uh, James as well. We've heard this, right? We've talked about the original paper by, by James on this. So not much to say here. It's easy, easily po possible eavesdrop on geosatellites. Uh, it's cheap, it's, can do it over wide areas. And there's, at least for the consumer, no good solution against this. You can use your VPN, but uh, basically it will destroy your performance, as you well know. So uh, we've done all this, right? We looked at the maritime stuff at the even with just a few percent uh, of the messages uh, that you get in some cases, as we've seen earlier, if you look long enough, you'll get a lot of observations uh, as we've shown in that original outline paper. To do something about it, uh, NDSS 2021, uh, we published QPEP, um, which is a combination of Quick from back then from Google and uh, performance enhancing proxies. Suppose some of you will be familiar with these performance enhancing proxies, but basically by breaking the end-to-end -end TCP semantics and bundling a bunch of, uh, well, multiplexing, bundling a bunch of uh, round trips together in, in the form of proxies, uh, you save these round trips, which can take 600 milliseconds and longer over geostationary satellites. So uh, you will certainly feel that when, when browsing, if these are on or not. Uh, however, if you do your own end-to-end -end encryption with VPN, then these won't work. So with Quick, back then built by Google, uh, but standardized now, of course, uh, and this UDP-based transporter call being used, obviously, a lot on the internet now, can also be implemented for performance-enhancing proxies. So there was James' idea. He did it in a test bed. Uh, nice thing is it does the multiplexing, the speed up, but it's also properly encrypted uh, using TLS 1.3. So there we get decent performance, decent encryption. And this was also shown in the original paper in the test bed. Um, test bed was a whoops, sorry, relatively straightforward uh, implementation. You have some dockerized uh, version using OpenSense, publicly available uh, test, uh, yeah, simulation test beds, um, implement that, can, can use it A on your own terminal, can use it uh, on the internet, and it was basically all simulated and tested, but the main thing, and that's why we're here, is we couldn't test it with a real satellite and a real uh, satellite dish, right? Uh, yeah, that's just what I mentioned. OpenSend Docker-based test bed. You can read all of that in the paper. And you do standard networking performance tests, so page load times and good put. We said, okay, now it's time. Uh, let's build something to really test this out in, in the real world. So our students built a completely automated test bed based on the original uh, Docker one. Uh, he split it into two. So on the one hand, we have the we have a nuke which we can put behind our satellite modem. Uh, there we have the well the one one end of a QPEP, the the client, and we have a server. We put it in the cloud and a VM as well. We did some long term measurements here. Everything was automated, uh, mostly because we want to save some money. So. We did it at night uh, between midnight and 5 p.m. because uh, 5 a.m. because the bandwidth was free, um, so we could do five hours of testing for for free basically. Um, all of that is available in, in full uh, on GitHub there, as you can see. Uh, we had two test beds. This one is on the ETH Zurich building, um, so we obviously had some reasonably Weatherproof, uh, it's, it's not like crazy in Switzerland, but uh, still there's a lot of rain and it's cold. 
Uh, so we need some weather proof setup, uh, put it in this box, and you see with the partly view of Lake Zurich there, uh, we mounted it on top of a very tall building. Uh, and used it, uh, SAT provider in this case was UtilSat, ground station located in, in Italy, and on the KA band, bandwidth, it's just what we, what we ordered basically. And then, and that's a key point really, one of the yeah, key takeaways, here we could work with a provider, I mean we bought it through a reseller, and then they sent us to the provider, so UtilSat, and they were able to fully disable the performance enhancing proxy for us. And that was important. And we could send them an email and they could switch it on again, right? So we could really do tests with a proxy on and off and we could, we could be sure that this was possible. Uh, and that wasn't easy. We had an older setup here in Thun uh, in, in our headquarters, KU band, the ground station in Luxembourg and run by Astra. And for the life of us, we couldn't do this, right? So we said, please disable all, all performance enhancing stuff that you do. And the only thing um, they were able to do was basically search up the website caching and that would reactivate if the modem was restarted. But they, we checked and very clearly they could never um, disable all the performance enhancing stuff, right? And that, yeah, then doesn't allow us to do proper tests. And that was the problem. Because, yeah, we had some hypotheses that we did want to test uh, first. Is a simulation that James did back then in the Docker testbed and OpenSend. Is that really valid? Um, do our channels look the same? And the second one is the performance good, good enough, as as good as we used to see in that paper. Um, but how does it compare to the provider's performance and on-time proxy? Uh, how does it compare if it's on or off? Right. Then compared to other performance enhancing proxies, at least those few that are openly available, um, they're not many and they're certainly not what the providers are using. But again, as we've seen quite often, it's proprietary. So we have to make do with whatever we, we are able to get our hands on. And finally, yes, the obvious comparison is with OpenVPN because as an end user, it's the only thing you can do. WireGuard is an option um, which we haven't tested here yet, but uh, principle that's that's your comparison if you want some security. So um, we set up all this test bed, right? It's available. You can even uh, you can log in remotely. That's possible. So people have been doing that. Uh, you can run these tests. It's all written at night into a database, and then you can analyze uh, the tests uh, after that. So we'll the software engineering by Julian was really, really nice. Uh, we got some first results here, and that also shows that this uh, setup, this end of life setup in Tune, um, in general, wasn't the best. Uh, you see the variance here of the latency, just some some random pings on the top left corner, right? Uh, it was much, much more variable, much higher the variance in, in Tune, while in the uh, ETH setup, it was reasonable, like uh, not exactly as we saw in, in OpenSend, but you know, it's a real channel. So you would always expect that your real world uh, measurements look a little bit different than even a specific satellite um, simulation setup. Uh, top right corner, we still have the simulation basically uh, from the original paper. Um, so that's what we expect, or what we wanted to have and expected. Um, you nicely see the TCP slow start, right? Um, some cl classic network lectures. Uh, and it's, it's actually what we saw on the lower left corner, also in our hep free setup in an ETH. So uh, that was quite comparable, we said, okay, that's nice and that's what we expected. On the right, just as a comparison, if the provider's performance enhancing proxy is still on, uh, yeah, it looks very different, uh, quite odd, to be honest. Uh, so it's uh, 
yeah, just the general characteristics basic here. Then we run iperf and uh, for the good port and for the page load time on the next slide. Uh, again, top left corner, the original simulation. Um, on the right, top right corner, uh, we used all of the available forms enhancing proxy uh, implementations and QPEP and compared them. And uh, QPEP did better in particular with uh, small transfer sizes, small files. Uh, you have large files, it's basically very similar. But uh, at least with, with small files, QPEP did well. Obviously, better than the plain connection, but also better than at least these available open source connections. Uh, again, the non PEP free links uh, on lower left and lower right. Uh, here, we could really, until now, we weren't able to figure out what's the problem here. Um, Sorry. So uh, the red one is QPEP, right? And on both of the lower ones, uh, QPEP and OpenVPN have terrible performance. So it's much worse than anything that is not encrypted. And it's also very stable. And there was we could really not figure out what the reason for this is. Our top guess would be it has something to do with UDP. I mean, quick runs over UDP. Um, but we couldn't verify it really. And obviously, we, again, providers don't really tell you. The engineers were even willing to, but honestly, it didn't look like they had the real clue what all their optimizations in the network were, right? So uh, yeah, when the PEP is on, then using encryption is not a good idea with your performance. That's what we would expect, uh, but it's really significantly worse. And also QPEP here couldn't help. Uh, the page load times, it's not as bad. So uh, simulation, again, there QPEP did quite well in um, comparison even yeah to all the other options and OpenVPN was the worst. On the right, we see QPEP actually does the best if there's uh, no PEP there. Uh, but the difference isn't as large as in the simulation, so they all cluster more or less together. And then if you have the PEP activated, again, we see OpenVPN is the worst, um, but also in some cases, yeah, encrypted and yeah, all of the encrypted versions, they don't work at all if you have these performance enhancing proxies activated. And we tried even, is there some caching? So we tried not with the top 20, but with really random websites that nobody ever uses, right? Just to see if there's some other optimizations, uh, but that was not the case. So could really not figure that out. Summary of these preliminary findings. Uh, yeah, just what I mentioned. If we have no PEP, then the simulated test bed is actually matched quite well um, in our real world setup. Uh, we definitely do better with QPEP than with OpenVPN. So on average, we uh, had 17% faster page load time and 80% uh, more good put. So that's nice. We played around really figuring out what the optimizations, optimizations were. So ports didn't matter. We tried on other ports. Um, that was not it. Um, we again, the people on the uh, SAS link, yeah, they said, sorry, this is end of life, basically. End of service, uh, it works, but we will throw it away soon, so uh, nobody cares. So we, even for, for network research optimizations, they weren't really able to help us. Uh, future work. Uh, we want to collect some more data and maybe we get another link if we get another provider, right? Why not? Uh, we can try always the idea. It doesn't make sense with Leo. The round trip times are much shorter. On the other hand, if you start having inter-satellite links, then they might get larger again, right? So let's see. Uh, WireGuard should be tested for sure. That has been mentioned a few times. Uh, obviously, a different type of implementation. On the QPEP side, 
that's open source. So there's quite a lot of things that can be implemented. Uh, some of the zero round trip time things, uh, some uh, UDP optimizations are still there uh, to work into QPEP, for example. And we found that, yeah, you can tune your parameters for your specific setup, right? So that's that's probably also possible and something we haven't done extensively. So it's not kind of one size fits all. So we takeaways, uh, we've built a real world test bit. It's definitely very reliable, auto proof. It's automated, nicely deployed, um, and anyone can take these Docker versions and the uh, cloud VMs and deploy that on their own commercial satellite links. These things are not expensive, right? Uh, I think it's maybe $200 uh, dollar capital expenditure and then whatever you want to pay f for your link for, for a month, and that might be 20 30 50 dollars per month or so so that's affordable i mean we've been talking here about having difficulties in access to some sort of space research things uh but that is is actually there we measured uh, over three and a half months and collected a lot of preliminary measurements over these links uh it's definitely a black box so if you don't have a provider on your site it's very, very difficult, so uh, you can't do anything. If there's no dashboard where you can say, please uh, disable these performance enhancing proxies, right? You really need to call somebody and convince them that it's legitimate and they should do this for you. So you need some good relationships. Um, finally, yeah, first look at this is if it's disabled, QPEP is quite close to the original simulations, which is nice, but there's also Again, in black box, a lot of potential problems behind here. It's not that you can just deploy it on your system and uh, it will magically solve all your problems. Uh, there's quite some research to be done here, but I don't think Geo is going away all that quickly. Uh, I mean, quite a lot of domains, also in the military domain, they will stay for a long time. So uh, certainly some, some opportunities here. With that, yeah, talk is over. Thanks for still staying and listening to this i have two questions the first one um when you compare so when you compare the different pep mechanisms in the graphs you had like four or five different ones that you compared against mm -hmm. um are they mutually like by principle are they mutually exclusive or would there be potential to kind of take the best of each technique and then create the best pep technique out of those ideally i know that you cannot easily build them but have you thought about that I I don't actually know what they all do. Uh, I just I just know from James that uh, all of these are fairly old. Like the, those that you can find, these if I recall, like twenty years old. I mean, this was the time when these were created. So I imagine you can do a lot, and that's also why the providers' performance enhancing proxies. I mean, they have an incentive to improve these on on their end, and probably not share. They're pro they're better than what you can find there open source. And nobody has really been working on open source improvements of performance enhancing proxies. So yeah, proprietary should be a lot of good stuff. And uh, other than that, I think, yeah, I'm sure you can combine some of these ideas. Uh, but again, on the satellite end, you would have to work with the ISPs. I don't see another option. Uh, QPEP has however been used by some people even for terrestrial networks uh, that are oh, like going over the whole whole globe right if you have long enough round trip times uh, some people have tried and it has worked even there doing this sort of multiplexing so maybe there's some some other opportunities than just space where you still don't have access to the system okay and a second question, um, at the end of the last slide, you, you, sh you kind of said that um, the, 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 the results demonstrate that um, the, the real world experiments kind of confirm the simulations, but there were a number of graphs where surprisingly the, um, the QPEP performed quite differently than here, for example, the right bottom one, right? That was kind of differently to what was expected. So I was wondering how much this kind of confirms the simulation or rather contradicts it or rather points out cases where it actually confirms it and others where it performs differently without really 
without you really knowing why. Yes, so so it does confirm it if the PEP is off at the provider. Um, there were no simulations of QPEP over a PEP. So we were also interested in this. They were not, we didn't simulate this before, but we wanted to know, yeah, how is, how does it, like having two PEPs together, uh, how does that affect performance, right? Because obviously, you know, if you're a consumer, um, then you have to call them and say, please switch this off. So my QPEP works reasonably well because here it doesn't. If you just switch it on, on your business link, uh, your encryption, it doesn't work well. So, but we hadn't simulated that before because basically not possible uh, doing a simulations like the provider would have to give you somehow their setup, right? Um, but for the, for the simulation that we did, basically without the PEP, it reasonably matched this uh, as far as simulations and the real world go. So it's not completely off. First off, uh, huge thanks for, you know, getting the NDSS paper and then going back and doing the actual real world experiments that you couldn't do at the time. That's, uh, that's really nice to, to be able to actually validate this. Um, going back to the whole, when the PEP is on, QPEP doesn't work quite mm. so well. How painful was it to get the uh, satellite provider to turn that off for you? Like, is that, obviously you have to call them, but like, you know, do I stand a chance as a regular customer of being able to get them to do that? Or was, you know, does this, I had to go three levels of support in, or I had to know a guy who worked there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's difficult to say. I have a feeling if you're a commercial customer and, but ultimately this was a setup we bought of a website, um, and then we talk to them, but of course I do work at the government and, uh, generally in my experience, it has been slightly easier to get people to do something than when I was at the university, uh, but not impossible, uh, either way. Right. But, uh, these are, we have a good connection now with the VSAT people in, in Switzerland. Uh, yes, I, I think as a regular customer. You, you can ask and you know, if more people ask for it, uh, they, they might have this as a service to an extent. Uh, but for us, we were upfront and we explained, okay, this is what we need. Actually, when we ordered, we asked the reseller, is this possible? And the sales person, no problem, no problem whatsoever, right? Uh, it was okay for that link that we actually bought at the time. For the other link that we had, yeah, it wasn't possible. So it's a pain for sure if you just could advance to the slide please with the alexa yeah i was just wondering if i understood correctly what you're doing here because i would guess that the top 20 websites these days are all https so is it true that what we are seeing here is actually that we are seeing lots of https tunneled over your qpap is that what we're seeing here yeah i mean okay it's, so it's um, just requesting or yeah so yeah going to so that means there is still the extra round trip of tls is inside that yeah. thing i was wondering um if i remember correctly google makes some of its servers directly available via quick have you tried to run a test where you go really with a quick link that is so that you subject to your qpack only a true quick connection and not let's say https this stuff. Stuff. That was definitely debated, but I don't think we tried this in the measurements now. We can. I mean, it's still up. We, we did try a lot of non HD. You know, we really went to some German uh, district government websites that, that no one would ever uh, go to, and they were HTTP, and uh, it wasn't much of a difference, uh, honestly. But we, we thought, okay, maybe they obviously they cache the top 20 Alexa websites somehow or. Something like that, right? That's just a short question from my understanding. Um, so what do you say is that this, um, so the provider side PEP is really an unlinked decision. So they can decide that per link, it's not that. Um, yeah. So for, for every single connection, basically, that you build up, they have the ability to switch on or off their. On, on your modem, right? And it's based on your modem configuration. Like they know it. They know it's your modem. Okay. And for that modem, they switch it off. 
Okay. Okay. So that, that concerns then all the connections that you do. So it's not a yeah. per link thing, but it's everything that, okay, just for. Yeah. I had a question actually on the underlying link layer. Uh, when you, uh, the Toon connect, the more modern one, were they both using DVB-RCS as for the yeah, return yeah. channel? So yeah, that was yeah. identical and no RCS2 or something like this? Yeah. No, this was the same. Okay, good. Thank you.